Bibliophiles of the internet. My name is Adriana, this is Manga Monday, and today is all about Behind the Scenes by Bisco Hattori. Unless you've been living under a huge rock for I don't know how many years, then you know that Bisco Hattori is the creator, genius, mastermind behind Oran High School Host Club, only one of the most well-loved manga and anime series of all time, and now she's back at it again with a new series. Behind the Scenes is a slice-of-life school story about a young college student named Ramaru Kurisu who comes from a fishing family. He's very very shy, soft-spoken, listless, has no direction, doesn't really know what he's doing in life, and he also gets a lot of flack from other people around him for always ruining things or just being in the way. So one day on campus he's trying to not be in the way and he's retreated to this very quiet corner of the school and ironically he ends up crashing the set of a student film. It's a zombie flick and the props, costumes, makeup, and gore just freak Ramaru out and he ends up fainting when he comes to he realizes that he has been taken in by the art squad. The art squad is a group of people who create and design all of the art, props, sets, and costumes for all four film clubs on campus. They desperately need a new member and they see that Ramaru is really not doing anything with his life so they decide to enlist him in their club. I love this volume. I had such a great time reading through it and I'm just so happy that Bisco Hattori is creating new work again and that there's new things for me to look forward to from her because this was great. What can I say? Bisco Hattori excels at writing these stories with huge casts of characters. She did it in Oran, she's doing it again here and she's nailing it. She knows how to balance these groups and how to explore their dynamics as a whole but also pay attention to individual characters and I'm sure we'll see even more of that in future volumes. Another thing I really like about this series is that it's reminiscent of Oran without trying to copy it exactly or just do the same thing again. And a key difference I noticed in this one is that the group dynamic I feel is reversed. So in Oran you have this group of highly eccentric people and I felt like Haruhi was the anchor. She was there to bring them back down to earth and force them to check their perspective every now and then. In this one I feel like it's the art squad that is grounding Ramaru. They're giving him the opportunity to explore himself and his abilities and to figure out who he is and what he really wants. I mean they all definitely have their own quirks and roles. They're zany in their own ways as is Bisco Hattori's specialty but it's more about Ramaru Ramaru being surrounded by a group of people for the first time who are so determined and driven and passionate about what they do. They're not paid, they're essentially glorified volunteers and they take on an enormous amount of work trying to produce everything for all of these various clubs on campus. And because they're essentially strangers to him, they have no reservations about putting their trust in Ramaru or giving him assignments and that's new for him. He's never been needed, no one has ever depended on him for anything Thing or trusted him to do anything without messing it up. So like I said, I feel like they're the ones who are grounding him and they're giving him this chance to explore his abilities and his capabilities in a way that has never been afforded to him before. I was easily able to glean that aspect of Ramaru's character and the group dynamic from this first volume alone and I feel like even in this first installment you get to see Ramaru grow in so many significant and satisfying ways and I'm really excited to see him continue growing as the series goes on. And not only is Bisco Hattori great at balancing group dynamics and big casts of characters, but she does a great job of balancing the fluctuating sentiments throughout this series as well. Because it definitely has those serious, reflective, intimate moments like those I just discussed about Ramaru and his personal growth, but it's also funny as hell, which is basically Bisco Hattori's trademark at this point. They get into these crazy, zany situations, they run up against extreme deadlines, they have to work with outlandish people and of course the members are strangely passionate or specific about certain types of things. Plus I feel like Ramaru's character is extremely relatable. He's tentative, he's shy, he's not really good with other people. He's constantly obsessing over every conversation he ever has, wondering whether that person must think less of him now or if he somehow said the wrong thing or he's in a constant panic over whether everything he touches is going to turn into a disaster or whether he he has somehow found a new and glorious way to mess up and I feel like that's really really funny 
but it's also real. So the series really just hits all the right notes at all the right moments, and I feel like Bisco Hattori exercises great control over all of these fluctuating sentiments, as I said, and I think she also has a great instinct for knowing when to introduce everything at just the right time. I thought this was a great first volume and a wonderful introduction into this new series. I've already pre-ordered volume two, and I just can't wait to read it. So if you have read behind the scenes or you would like to or if you've read any of Bisco Hattori's other work, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. But that is everything I had for Manga Monday today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I will catch you on the flip side of the page. Bye!